Welcome to Techniques and Information for People Who Are Blind or Visually Impaired, offered by the State of Connecticut Bureau of Education and Services for the Blind, also known as BESB, which is part of the Department of Aging and Disability Services. Hello, my name is Mark Rafferty. I'm a vision rehabilitation teacher with the Connecticut Bureau of Education and Services for the Blind, sometimes referred to as BESB. We are part of the Department of Aging and Disability Services, and in today's video, I will describe techniques and methods which will aid those with vision impairment and blindness in safely pouring liquids. Before you, there are four coffee cups assembled on the counter. I ask for you to take a moment to consider which of these cups might be the most appropriate for an individual with vision loss to safely pour a cup of coffee. I will start from left to right and describe each mug. The first mug is a mug that's deep in color. It's actually like a plum or purple color with slightly tapered sides. The second mug is a plain white mug with straight sides. The third mug is a mug that's slightly oversized. It has some embellishments uh, both outside the mug and if I look, look closely also inside the mug and on the handle. And the last mug, the fourth mug in the row, has design on the outside of a white body of the mug and the inside is um, gray in color. So reflecting back for a moment and taking a moment to consider the options, the option which really provides the best contrast for an individual who would be pouring themselves a cup of coffee would rep be represented by the second mug, which is white in color, has the least amount of design, and um, therefore um, less is better in terms of the patterning and, and being plain. So if one is, has concerns about spilling, taking the proper um, precaution in terms of selecting the proper cup uh, would be a great start, but also some simple strategies. If you have concerns about um, setting things down, perhaps, um, you know, and maybe pouring, of course, this represents an example of bad contrast, which is why I'm intentionally showing it, but this is a saucer or plate, luncheon plate. Um, one could go ahead and utilize that, so this could contain spills. There is a little bit of a lip here. Um, another possible strategy would be to utilize a bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that out of the way. One could put the cup inside of the bowl. Um, this does provide slightly better contrast. Is a technique or strategy. Another strategy would be to utilize a tray, or in this case, I have a baking sheet, which actually provides really, really good contrast because I've actually lined it with um, this shelf liner material that you can buy at any big box store. Um, it's kind of a waffle weave. I'm pulling it back from the tray a little bit. Um, but it could go onto a cookie sheet, a jelly roll pan, even a 9 by 13 pan, or line any type of tray. Whatever you might have at home. There's no need to go out and reinvent the wheel and maybe perhaps invest in something you don't necessarily need to purchase. But utilizing something you have already and buying this. Uh, the nice thing about this is the cookie sheet can certainly be cleaned easily. Even the shelf liner can be rinsed clean and then hung up over a towel rod or um, towel rack or towel bar to go ahead and allow it to dry. Okay. Another popular strategy for pouring liquids it would be simply to utilize one's kitchen sink. In this particular case, I'm normally left-handed, but I'm going to try doing this with my right, would be simply to pour a cup of coffee. And in this case, if I were to have spilled any, I could safely, it would safely go down the drain. Uh, and if it didn't, and I overflowed the cup, some I could simply tilt the cup a little bit, wipe the excess clean with a paper towel, and uh, both the side and the bottom, so that when I go to set the cup down elsewhere, it's not going to leave one of those rings on my counter or my table. So that's another strategy. I'm going to just dump that out. Um, and there's lastly, I have another strategy which involves a little bit of technology. Um, this is a liquid level indicator. It's a device that runs on batteries, or in this case, one battery. Some run on AA or a button type battery. This device operates on conductivity. Doesn't mean you're going to get shocked. Preemptively, you heard the, uh, the little chirp over here from it. This particular one vibrates and buzzes to let you know when your cup or drinking glass is full. One thing I should add is if you are going to go ahead and preparing something like hot chocolate or one of the um, soup mixes that comes in an envelope, you might want to add those products first, or if you're doing an iced beverage, add the ice cubes first because they displace liquid. Uh, and that's true with any of the techniques that I've shown thus far. 
And when I go to pour now, using this device, listen carefully for the beep, and it left about a half an inch of space at the top of the mug. And I'm going to get up a close-up so you can kind of see what this looks like. There's a couple of prongs, and on the outside there's a little um, case that contains the battery. Um, this cannot be immersed in water and should not be put in your dishwasher. Um, you should simply wipe it clean with a damp paper towel. I also, also caution you against leaving it in your kitchen sink. Um, for those who have a garbage disposal, um, it probably will not work very well if it falls down there afterwards unbeknownst to you. So keeping in mind all the techniques and strategies, um, should you have any questions today, please feel free to f give us a phone call at the following telephone number. Uh, or numbers, I should say, um, you may call us at 860-602-4000 or within the state of Connecticut, uh, Connecticut on our toll-free line of 1-800-842-4510. And again, it's Mark Rafferty with Besby, and I want to thank you for watching and have a great day. For more information, please contact Besby at 860-602-4000. Thank you.